Hello and welcome to RDH TV. My name is Morten Valer and I come from Denmark. The fly I'll be tying now is a bait fish pattern. It is really a versatile pattern you can use for all kinds of bait fish. I use it mainly for sea trout in Denmark, but I've used it for brown trout in Sweden, for sea bass in Norway, and a lot of other species. So you can use this for almost everything. You can do your own variations in different colors, but my favorite color is a white or a light colored one. But you can do brown, black, I do a black for night fishing for example, and it's a really fine and effective pattern. So this is the one I'll be tying right now. The fly I'll be tying now is a small bait fish pattern. It's a pattern I've been using for almost 10 years now, or at least 8. Um, it's made only of dubbing and the, the whole idea behind the fly is that it should look exactly the same either in the water or in the vise. It's, it, ha it has the same shape in the water as it has in the vise. And that's a, in a, an, an important feature I think. As I said it's made of dubbing, it's made of polar dubbing mostly. And a little bit of ice dubbing just to add some flash to the fly. Um, you can mix this polar dubbing in a lot of different colors and I prefer to do it myself. Uh, you can buy the plain colors as well. Uh, but I think it, it looks more lifelike if you mix these colors to get the yeah the right the right color combination for the fish you want to imitate. Uh, it started out as a pattern for sea trout fishing in Denmark, but I use it a lot now in even for brown trout and rainbow trout and all kind of other fish actually. So all species where you want to have a bait fish imitation in small sizes, this is a really versatile pattern. Uh, I'll start by preparing the dubbing. I use white, which is my basic color for these uh, flies, and then I can add the color I want. Um, like that. And I need, I think, you know, this one I will put in some olive. Just a little bit. Like that. Maybe a little pink. It will only be a sm it, 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 the, the fly will not turn pink by this. Just give it a little tint. Uh, and maybe a little tan. You can do this, in, as I said, in whichever color you want. You, depending on the pattern you want to imitate, or the fish you want to imitate. And I add a little bit of pearl colored eye stopping. It's, uh, be, be careful not to use too much of this because it adds a lot of flash, especially in sunny weather. I do a lot of these patterns without any eye stopping at all, so I just put in a little bit. It's really visible in the water when, the, when it's sunny, so be careful not to use too much. I think I got a good combination here, so what I need to do now is just to mix it. And I do that by just pulling the fibers out and try to blend it as good as possible. It's a little bit like blending paint. Uh, and if you do this long enough, you'll see that the you can't see the different colors anymore. They'll just disappear and become one color, actually. And especially when it's tied into the fly, you will not be able to see that it's made out of different colors. And you can make the shade as exactly as you want it. What I need to do now is to make <clears throat> five or six bunches of dubbing which I need to put into a dubbing loop. And um, the way I do it, I can show you here the, the table as well. I take a bunch of dubbing like this, it's a lot, but uh, I pull all the fibers out that's not straight. I change my hand, just pinch it with my left hand first and pull out fibers that's not straight, change, pull that out and I'll do that until I'm sure that I'm almost only having fibers that's straight like this. So I got the first bunch now with ma mainly straight fibers and I can put it on the table. That was one bunch. 
I'll do the next one. Same technique. I'll show you later why this is necessary to do. It becomes obvious when we put this in the dubbing loop. Three. And five. I think this would be enough for this fly. Maybe I should take an extra one just in case. I think five will do it, but. Better safe than sorry. Then I got the the six bunches of dubbing for the for the body of the fly. Now I'll be get ready to to tie. The hook size I prefer the most is a size six. Uh, I can even go down to a size eight, but. Preferably a size 6. I think that's a good size for most baitfish imitations actually. And you get a decent good hook gape as well. But I can, as I said, do them smaller as well if, if needed. But size 6 is a good size. Just fasten the thread with the, uh, behind the hook eye and move the thread backwards to the hook bend. Not down in the hook bend, just to where the hook bend starts. Then I take a little bit of the dubbing, the small bunch of the dubbings, dubbing I made earlier, where all the fibers are straight. And now it's a, this is a quite important that you do this the right way. What I want to do now is to have a really long tail, you can say, actually, like that. And then you have the, uh, the part on the other side, which I'll bend backwards. Um, which is shorter and this it, it doesn't make sense right now but when you cut or like cut the fly later this will make a lot of sense why I do this I'll tell you why later but normally as I do this I just put the bunch around the thread like that and try to steer it in exactly where I want it then I got as you can see here, two thirds on that side and one third on the other side. This is ac actually helps me create the taper of the whole fly, which you'll see a little bit later. Just securely fasten the materials and then bend this backwards like that. You can, if you want to, put maybe one or two turns underneath the tail. I'm not sure this really helps anything. I, it just feels right to do it. I, I'll do it. That was the first part of the fly, actually. And we make a big dubbing loop. Like that. Put in the dubbing wheel. Any, any old thread there and let it hang there. And then I need to put on some dubbing in the traditional way uh, just to cover the hook shank before I make the rest of the fly and I do just do this, this as you normally would do any kind of dubbing on a normal fly. This is only the base for the body, so you know you don't have to be super careful about this. It's just a it's just an underbody, so I just move forward quite fast like this and let the bobbin hang here. Now I'm ready to do the whole body on the fly, which is done with the dubbing loop and the dubbing. I just need to put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. I'll take the five or six bunches of dubbing, which I made early on, as you remember. It's a lot of dubbing, but they, 
that's not that difficult to put into the loop actually just hold them in your right hand and then put it into the dubbing loop you need to place them 50 50 so you have the same amount of dubbing on each side and then you can open the bunches so they get more even distributed on the in between the two threads here take your time it's not it's they're not going to dislocate so don't don't worry you can take your time here be careful you the more careful you are here the, the easier it gets when you may want to make the rest of the fly on when you're making the rest of the fly so just take your time I think I could probably get got too much dubbing here but as I said earlier on better save than sorry so you can just cut it off if it's too much I think I got plenty here but that's fine and then you spin it like that and you spin it as much as possible don't spin it too hard you can risk that the thread will break probably close to the hook normally I've tried that once or twice but so just as much as you think this thread will will may will take actually I think we're close to the point where it would break so we'll just stop here now I need to and that's really really important now I need to pick out all the dubbing I need I actually need this to be a kind of chenille and not a thick dubbing brush as it is now uh, so I either use the point of my scissor to pick it out or I use my dubbing needle normally I use both actually start out with the dubbing uh, with the scissors point of the scissors just like this I'm not cutting I'm just using the point of the scissor and the same thing the other way I'm so used to this it's it's uh, it's easiest thing for me to do is to do it with the point of the scissor what you need to do is to pull out any dubbing which is going around in circles around the thread. We want this to be, as I said, just keep on doing this until you don't have any fibers left that's going around the thread. You get a, as you can see, you get a really, really tight brush. Uh, so maybe you'll ask yourself, why don't you then buy a dubbing brush? You can buy brushes now in most shops that, um, that do the same thing. The problem is with the brushes I have seen is they're too thick. I don't like them to be so thick in the, in the base of the fly. It, it, it doesn't look right. And some of the dubbings that's used on the dubbing brushes are not translucent like this one. The polar dubbing is really translucent and it looks very much like a small fish in the water. Now I'm happy. I got all my fibers pulled out. I got a really thin core, which is what I want. And now I just need to make the wraps here, turns. Moisten your fingers a little bit, pull the fibers backwards, like you're, dub you're doubling the fibers. Don't do it on, on all the, the whole thread all, uh, immediately, just do the two or three centimeters at the time. Then we need to do this. One wrap, two, and three. Then I stop, take my dubbing needle, pull out. It's much easier to do. You, can, you could wrap the whole hook uh, in one sequence, but then you make your job much, much harder. And I'm not sure that you'll get the same result actually. So just take three turns at a time and then then pull it out with your dubbing needle. One, two, three. Take a break, use your dubbing needle. Okay, next sequence. 
moisten your fingers a little bit, pull the fibers backwards, like you would do with a normal haggle. One, two, and three. Pull the fibers out. Same procedure. One, two, three. Same procedure again. One, two, three. I think I got the exactly right amount of dubbing here. Do the last wraps here. I think I got just do this before I make the last wrap. Just like that. Cut off the rest of the dubbing loop without cutting the thread. Like that. And then just securely fasten the rest of the dubbing fiber so they have. Pulled a bit, a little bit backwards, like that. <laughs> then the fly is actually, for from a fly tying position, finished. What we need to do now is to put on some epoxy, some eyes, and then cut this dubbing into a fishing shape or into a bait fish shape. I need to mix the epoxy for the... We, we need to put on two layers of epoxy on this fly. The first one is just to give it the fly the shape and then the next one is just to give it the finish. So we'll start with the, the layer that will give the fly the shape and use a five minute epoxy. So I probably get three and a half to four minutes to work with this epoxy. That's more than enough. You think Three and a four, three or four minutes uh, is not enough, but it is. It's a long time actually. Just make sure that this was the hardener. Yes. Try to get this the amount even, so you sure this will work correctly. If you need to put something in more than the other, you need to take a little bit more hardener than the other one. But try to get it even, and then you just mix it. It's mixed, probably like that. And then I need to put on the epoxy on the fly here. This is what I'm saying now is actually quite important. The, the problem is, if you can call it that, is that if you try to put epoxy on dubbing fibers, you most likely to pull these fibers out, and you will leave a lot of epoxy. On places where you don't want the epoxies, so you'll end up uh, end up with a wrapper lure instead of a fly. So be really careful here. What I'm doing is that putting on the epoxy, starting just behind the the hook guy, and then I work myself a little backwards, and then I go that like that, and then I can pull it out without pulling out any of the dubbing fibers. 
So just take your time here so you don't put the epoxies in the epoxy in places where you don't want it. Never pull out the the uh, needle here. Do it here instead. Then you then you should be safe. And try just to work the epoxy into the fibers. And then you must try to move your hand instead and not trying to loosen your grip on the fly. Do it on the other side as well. Just take your time. You got almost four minutes here, so it's it's uh, it's a long it's long time actually, more than enough. And I think I'm quite happy now actually. This, is, as I said, is just the first coating. We'll put another coating on to make it look good and smooth. So this is just to get the shape. Nothing else. I think I'm fine there. I'll just do like this. What we need to do now is just wait. I probably this will be another two minutes before this starts to be hard. Uh, so yeah, two minutes, I guess. What we would like to accomplish here is that we will want some height on the on this side of the fly, on the top of the fly, and have it very, very flat underneath, so we don't destroy the the hooking possibilities of this fly. We need to have it, yeah, quite flat underneath and high on top. Okay, I think we're ready to put on the eyes and start shaping this small bait fish maybe two or three millimeters behind the the last uh, wrap of thread there's still some room here behind the eye and that's where i want to make the gills with a red pen later so i need some space here behind the eye as well so place it between the last thread and the yeah where the epoxy ends so just like this and we do the same on the other side you can put on a whatever color of eyes you want but I think most bait fish have silvery colored eyes but you can you can get these these eyes in a lot of different colors and you can make your own design if you want to just want to check that they're positioned as they should yeah, it looks nice so now I'm ready to do the cutting uh, so, and cut this fly into shape uh, so it looks like a small bait fish you need a you need a really you need a really good scissor for this as well I, uh, the best you have uh, don't try to uh, put the fly into shape with your fingers just leave it as it is we want to um, we want to cut it so it, the thing is we want to keep it, the fly to keep its shape when it comes into water so just start underneath cut off like that a little bit on the side as well. On the top. Turn it around. This is a little bit scary. <laughs> you don't want to cut off too much. You spend so much time in making it, so it's it's uh, you can get get a little bit scared about this, but normally it will work out fine. Now you can see the thing when we put in the tail in the beginning with the long fibers that's actually the longest fibers that's what we did as the first step of this fly and remember that we had two thirds and one third and now actually that's helping me because I already got some of the shape of the fly given by that uh, technique in the beginning so this is the two thirds and the one third is in here somewhere so we got you already get like got some of the shape uh, from that first step on the fly actually so just do the cutting take a, cut a little bit in the side as well because otherwise it would get too round I need to 
shape it both on the side and on the top and bottom. So I turn around a little bit, remove some of the dubbing from my fingers. Take your time, it's not a... Don't rush anything, you don't want to destroy your good work. I think I need to take some more off here. And on the other side as well. looks now. Getting close I think. Still need to take some off on the top. A little bit on the sides as well. It still looks a little bit too fat. I want to especially on the back and the fly. It's like making a modeler, you can cut and cut and cut and cut and then you'll never be satisfied. But at the point you need just to stop and say, okay, this was the fly. Then I take my red permanent marker and put on some Stopping on the eye, but that's okay. Put on a gill here. Like that. I'm not really sure this attracts any more fish, but it looks it looks so nice on the fly, so I want to put it on. So maybe this is more for me as a fly tire than it is for the fish, but that doesn't really matter. And maybe you can Maybe you can do a little artistry on your fly. That was the, the gill. Then we can put on some, maybe a little of, of a back on the fly as well. This is not really for, this is also for me as a fly tie, maybe not so much for the fish, it just looks nice. I put on a little pink on this one. I've added a little pink dubbing, you remember, so I think we can put on a little pink paint as well. Even though these are called permanent markers, this will come off in water after maybe half a day of fishing. But uh, you can always put it back on if you want to, or you can just leave it as, as it is. Especially the light colors are coming off in water, but that's okay. Like that. Uh, dark grey as the next one. Just a little bit. So you'll have a combination of pink and grey and then a little black on the top. Oi. Like that. Just to get it, get it this, get this really black back as most most bait fish have. Hmm. And the fly is more or less finished. The only thing we need to do now is to put on a second layer of epoxy to cover the eyes and the gills. So we have a really smooth and nice finish to the head and uh, this will be a, a finished fly. So that's what I'll do now, just put on the second layer of epoxy.
Take your time, you just, remember you have approximately four minutes to do this so you've got all the time in the world actually. Cover the eyes and the gills and everything so you... So nothing is uncovered here. And while this is drying, I'm just turning it a little bit. When you put on the first layer, it was the 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 epoxy was uh, sucked into the dubbing, but on, on the second layer, it's a little bit more runny. So you need to you need to change position now and then, so it's not you're not creating a a drop somewhere. So we just have to sit and wait until this dries for a few minutes. I think it's finished. What we have here now actually is a fly that will keep its shape in the water. And not many bait fish patterns do that. And the reason why is that we have cut it into shape. So I'm sure and confident that this fly will have the shape in the water as it should have. It looks like a small bait fish when it gets into the water. So uh, try it. It's really it's really worth it. And as I said in the beginning, this is not just for for sea trout. It's even really good for brown trout, rainbow trout, uh, bass, uh, and a lot of other saltwater species actually. So it's a really effective and good pattern. So, go fishing! <laughs>